something's burning. Spring reverbs vary in price massively, but the one thing that unifies them all is none of them can do this. Except for the Knass, and the Knass is nearly, well, it's $500 odd, uh, we've got Teaching Machines Wellspring. Uh, that can't do what I just did then. Um, that's 1,200 quid. Then we've got Carl Martin Headroom, 250 quid. Game Changer Audio, 370 quid. These spring tanks, they're the spare parts, the innards of largely guitar amps, the spring reverbs you get in those. And because it's a spare part, it'd be rare to be charged north of 30 quid for one of them. The interesting thing is spring reverbs didn't first appear in amps like the Fender Reverb or the Fender Twin. Uh, they were invented by the Hammond Organ Company, who famously advertised the fact that you could put your Hammond organ into a cathedral in your living room. It's a very simple concept. It's uh, You've got a, an input and an output. So it's not dissimilar to a reverb chamber where you've got the speaker and a microphone. Um, and then you basically have a set of three springs connecting the in to the out. I think this is a Fender Twin reverb tank. This is a, I think, a Fender Reverb reverb tank. And goodness knows what this one is because it's kind of buggered but in a nice way. So my choice of amplification device is by a company that makes stuff for, for dub music. So they do sirens and um, echoes and stuff like that. And this is the Spring Amp. I really love this device so much that I bought two to try and do um, stereophonic. However, I cannot speak for their reliability. Uh, this one shuts down after a period of time. This one doesn't work at all, but they're a lot of fun. Let me take you through it by laying down a drum beat. So you've got your input here, which really does affect the timbre of the spring. And a cleverly designed tone which perfectly suits getting a good balance of low and top through the springs. You've got your output gain here and a mix between the filter and the springs. So resonance. So that's an HPF and we have an LPF. I personally find the HPF more useful. You can alter the depth of modulation and the speed of the LFO here. They've also got this really clever function, which is a trigger filter, which will respond to different levels of input and filter it accordingly. We just need to adjust the trigger sensitivity. It 
works just like a standard stomp box, although it's not a 9 volt in, it's a 12 volt in. So you have a TR in, TR out, and then you've basically got this insert chain, which is phono, which is great because all of these spring tanks have uh, phono connectors. Now, I'm wondering if I were to connect them directly, whether we could get the sound of the box on its own without the spring. Let, let's have a go at that. I may blow our ears off, but let's have a look. Red to red. So that's the crunch. You can start with just changing the, the kind of size of the return. Limit it to one spring, two, and then three. Let me just play it to you. I'll just take the, um, the actual original computer signal out. Now I'm just going to turn down the speakers. What's really fun is, is is it is it definitely an electroacoustic process? So if I turn the speakers right down. And naturally, you have a selection of different tanks to choose from. I know that one's from like a Fender Twin and one's from a Fender Reverb, and I don't know what this one is because it's buggered, but in kind of quite a cool way. So let's have a listen to the tone of these different ones. I think I prefer this one. And then this one might blow our ears off. As I said, I bought two of these so I could run a stereo image, but I'm not able to do that. So what I'm going to do is just do a bit of tomfoolery to hear how that would work in the stereo domain. Something's burning. I guess that's what it sounds like when you're about to burst into flames. Okay, let's just quickly line this up and then just gonna offset it by a bar pan either way to make it stereo. Interesting, not as profoundly stereo as I thought it would be. I'm just going to chop these up just to see if we can just use the snare reverb. Let's have a look at that, uh, that bit that happened at the other end as well. Uh, amazing YouTuber called Sides and uh, producer. She has a fantastic Logic Tips channel and Option. 
Click. Copy. Copies with the stuff. That's a good kick sound. Let's get some hi-hats. Uh, don't think it's going to give Kanye a run for his money anytime soon, but um, just interesting messing around with those different textures and, and, and <sighs> taking the harmonic language that these springs introduce, time stretching them, echoing them, all of that kind of stuff to create something that sounds less dislocated from real life, and something that's of this world and just slightly unusual, I guess. <laughs> For me, what's wonderful about a spring, it can be absolutely overused. I wouldn't put an entire mix for it, I don't think. But certainly for certain instruments to give it that filthy Tarantino, Brian Jonestown massacre kind of feel, brilliant with guitars, but also with analog synths, because analog synths lack the harmonic complexity and are therefore really difficult to mix. And just by applying just a little bit of spring reverb to analog, particularly vintage analog synths, you give it that harmonic language with, which gives it audibility and place within the sentient world as opposed to just a series of electronic components. For me, it suddenly becomes of this world. It, it, it doesn't even sound like it's pretending to be a room. It just, it just has presence, just a touch. Let's turn this way up and kind of crank it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all sorts of experiments with springs and see if I cannot come up with a suite of samples that um, you can enjoy and post them up onto Piano Book, linked below. Um, join up if you haven't done already. But more importantly, do subscribe to this channel because Monday is going to be a big Piano Book day. We're going to talk about the rebrand what it's going to be called, what our immediate plans are, and how we're going to get the thing financed, but also hopefully involve you from the get-go. If you haven't experienced Piano Book, do check out the link down below, because it's a very, very exciting project indeed that we're going to breathe life back into after a somewhat quieter patch, let's put it. I'd love to hear about your favourite spring reverbs. It's a technology that's been around for yonks, uh, so there's lots of different uses out there. And, you know, certainly for these, it's like 20 bucks. You don't need to buy one of these Benidub things. I think they're great, but as I said, I cannot vouch for their reliability. Um, but there are loads and loads of old hi-fi amplifiers out there. And any amplifier that, that has a tape function will have both an out phono and an in phono, and then you'll be able to spit that out of your, um, your, your amplifier. You could pick up one of those in a car boot sale and stuff. So, I mean, what I'm saying is, I think that you can get sprung up for less than 50 quid. Um, and they're a lot of fun if you can get to the spring. See you on Monday.